BJ from Morgan Game Game Game. I've got my guest here, Charles Mers, the director of Game Master. We're going to be talking about it in a little while, but we also want to talk about, as we always do, some spicy hot games that we played recently. I got a chance, thanks to Tim from Thunderworks, to play a game called Role Player Adventures. It's set in the role player universe. Charles, are you familiar with the role player universe? You know what I'm talking about? I am not. I, I am not familiar. Please tell me. All right. So Role Player was a game that came out a couple of years ago by Keith uh, Mateka, and it's one where you've played RPGs before, or you know what I'm talking about, RPGs, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. One of the most fun things that I remember being a seventh grader when my friend bought the red box and started teaching us all how to play D and D was rolling up the character. That was actually, in some ways, mm. kind of more fun. When when you'd go home, we would roll up all these. I, I probably had 12 different characters, but I really only played one. But we were always having fun rolling up characters. Role player is that in a board game. You actually roll up characters, strength and intelligence and dexterity. Think Sagrada or um, you know, or any one of those games where you're trying to match patterns. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of the game that is very close to it. But... Uh, Socratic probably the closest uh, link to it, but in terms of a great theme of trying to become an adventurer or a fighter or a cleric or barbarian. Well, a lot of people wanted to make the um, wanted to make the characters, but then they wanted to do something with them, and that's where Keith came up with the idea of role player adventures. How about if you take those characters, or if you didn't have one like me, and you get man, if you've ever played D and D, you know what this looks like. This looks like. A D and D module. It's got the cover and the picture, and you're going to take the characters you roll up, and you're going to adventure with them. The 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 one I have is three different adventures. I can't talk about everything else because, of course, the embargo. But I can talk about the first one. You're basically uh, talk talk about kind of a trope. You're just a young person joining up the King's Guard looking for adventure, and then complications ensue. Right? Okay. So you roll up your character. It's got strength and intelligence. And instead of the usual dungeon crawl, it's a dungeon crawl. You're going through a dungeon, you're attacking monsters, you're taking on quests, you're facing challenges, sort of choose your own adventure style, but it's got two cool twists. Number one, a great story. And for me, any dungeon crawl that's worth its salt has got to have a cool story, right? Absolutely. And then the second twist is that instead of rolling dice to just defeat combat, you're using those, cha those characters and the cards that come with them to manipulate the dice roll. So for instance, if there's an ogre, you might have to get a six green on your a, a six on your green die, a four on your purple die, and three white die that all have twos on them. Three white dice that all have twos on them. Well you're gonna be able to manipulate those with your with your character because each one of your character attributes changes or manipulates those things. So it's it's a cool system where you're you're bringing in role player and you're you're doing a great dungeon crawl. If there's any weakness, it's maybe mechanically. I kind of like the simple, you know, throw some dice out and do combat or like in Gloomhaven, you know, use some cards to defeat it. This has got a lot more built on it, but I see why, because you can specialize your character so much. But to me, what shines about role player adventure is the writing in the game. This, uh, this person, James Ryan, just knocked it out of the park. It's a storyline that in the first three adventures, I mean, by the third adventure, I'm just dying to find out what's going to happen next. And then, you know, what's going to go on in the next couple adventures? Role-playing games, RPGs, is that something you look for in your gaming, or are you strictly a Euro-type player? You know, um, you know, I wouldn't say strictly Euro-type, but because I think the lines between, you know, what is and isn't Euro, what qualifies, that this is in the last couple of years just gotten completely blurred. But a it's little true. more, you know, a little more traditional, like, you know, winner loser whether it's a co-op and you know you all win together you know that sort of thing i i tend to be attracted to those a little bit more you said blur and i mean look there's tons of dice in here right so you look at it and you think okay this is just your basic ameritrash but when i tell you about all these cards that manipulate dice up and down and and an economy that you're trying to buy and all these strategic elements that you're doing to, to meet the quizzes and the quests you know that at its heart, it's another one of those classic hybrids where you're taking this character and you're using some Euro mechanics to build up that character. At the same time, you get the story and the dice and the luck 
that everybody likes in a classic Ameritrash. And that's Role Player Adventures. I can recommend it for the story mechanically, maybe not exactly what I'm looking for, but but it's gonna be it's gonna make a lot of other people happy, you know, with with, uh, with the game. It's out on Thunderworks and it's still out on Kickstarter for a couple of days if anybody wants to check that out. That is Role Player Adventures.